Okay, so I guess we're gonna get going. It's 12.05 or whatever, and I believe we have uh, lunch at one, so I'll try to get, make sure you guys get there on time. So, um, hopefully, the PowerPoint online works better than not, um, so hopefully we don't lose the slides. Um, but my name is Mike Demo, uh, or Mike Demopoulos, as a lot of people call me. I am involved in the Joomla project in a lot of different areas, mainly things that involve money. So I head up sponsorships for the Joomla World Conference, I'm the chair of the capital team, and I'm also on the finance team. So um, that's how I contribute to the project. In my day job, I am a digital marketing manager, director for a local marketing company in Minneapolis, Minnesota, in the States. So that's me. And uh, if you haven't seen one of my talks before, they're more conversational less uh, talky, so we're gonna be able to uh, have a discussion, throw, go into some tools, and kind of just talk about the philosophies and why you want to A-B test and some ways you can do it, as well as just some ways you can have some fun with it. So, that being said, your problem is ducks. What way does your duck face? So, um, I used to have this whole thing about the slide because there's this famous case study that I believe HubSpot did. Yes, take case studies with a grain of salt. That's a case study for that company, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but they had a picture of a duck on a landing page. And they, uh, they had a duck facing to the right and then duck facing to the left, and they just mirrored the image. The right-facing duck converted 85% more than the left-facing duck. And that was true in that specific case. Now, again, I'm not saying throw ducks on all your pages, although rubber ducks have been proven to increase sales. So if you ever need to... Um, get some sales just so some rubber ducks on your website. But that's all the conversation we have about ducks going. So if you want more conversation about ducks, I'm sorry, go to another talk. But um, I make sure to include ducks in my talks. So there you go. Interesting fact, the world's largest rubber ducky will be coming to Duluth, Minnesota Harbor this summer. So if you want to see that, <laughs> it's the size of a steamboat. So that's something. Yeah, there's, you can find pictures online. It like towers over like the buildings. <laughs> the attack of the rubber ducky. So, basically, what is testing, and what is it not? Testing is controlled. Um, you want to make sure you do single variable testing, just like Crystal was saying yesterday. If you change twelve variables and your results go up or down, you won't know what the heck you did or if it affected anything. You want to make sure you test it. You also want to make sure you use software that isn't going to you know, hurt your SEO or any of the rankings and make sure you test a large enough statistically relevant sample so that your results don't get skewed. If you only test 100 users, one conversion can skew your results greatly. So you want to make sure that your results work for what you're looking for. In addition, um, I have my slides out of order. There we go. Yep, that should have been earlier. Okay, and they should be statistically relevant, like we we're talking about. You want to make sure you, uh, your data is outside the margin of error. There's lots of tools to help you do that. I'm going to talk about some of them at this talk. That's going to tell you if the data you have is relevant, a fluke, or you need to continue testing, or if you need to end this test altogether and maybe try a different test whatever the case may be. Um, I know a lot of clients that they're like, well, I changed this thing on my website, and I changed it for everybody, and my sales went up, and it was because of that thing. The thing that I've learned most in my internet website building career is correlation does not prove causation. And I get really upset when people are like, well, we updated the Joomla, and my house went on fire, so therefore, Joomla caused my house to go on fire. And I'm like, if it was a WordPress site, I would agree with you. But, <laughs> no. It's a good place to start, but, I mean, how many have had clients that said, you updated this thing, you did this thing, and this happened, and it was because of that thing that, even though it doesn't make any sense at all. I mean, we've all experienced that, and it's just, it's maddening. Correlation does not prove causation, but people are trying to find reasons to blame, basically, because we're human and we don't like to accept reality. So. 
ISO, um, I'm all about micro testing. What I mean by micro testing is testing small things in small groups of people. My ideal client test is 5% of the user base gets a variant. So that 95% of the site um, still gets the, the, the live content until you find your learnings and then we you know, take them on. Obviously, every client's different. If your site only has a couple hundred visitors a day, it's, it's not going to really work for you. But that being said, um, there's different philosophies with this, but it's what works for me. But there's also lots of tools out there that will give you recommendations. You can punch in your users and how many variants you want, and it'll actually recommend what percentage to test, what percentage to do the control on, et cetera. So, so what to test? Um, there's lots of case studies out there. We're going to go through some of them, um, just because I find them interesting. But the problem with case studies is people like to apply them to themselves. So this per HubSpot did this case study that proved stock photos perform better than real people photos, and this is a real case study, um, that I should only use stock photos on my website. That's one example, one landing page, one point in time, one client, and whatever the case may be. They're interesting reads, but bottom line is you can't take someone else's data and apply it to yourselves. However, it gives you good ideas on what to maybe think about when you design your experiments. Um, and I'm gonna steal this for next time, write a hypothesis statement. Um, you know, the scientific method like Crystal was talking about is you know, pretty much that. We're gonna try this, we expect this to happen, and we believe this to be true because of case study, findings, common sense, whatever the case may be. So, some things you can try to test are buttons. You can try different button style. You can try different button colors. And we're going to go through like a hundred ideas of test here, um, just to kind of get the juices flowing. Um, you know, what does the button say? What's the size of the text? Um, I had my most successful A/B test for an insurance company. They had um, they wanted quotes people buying dental insurance national company in the States. Um, you probably haven't heard of him, except for Crystal maybe. Um, we had a landing page where you fill out your information, you get a dental quote. It's gonna cost you this much to make sure your teeth don't fall out. And I tested, we tested everything like 30 second quote, you know, um, prices as low as $17. Like, we tested 100 different variables. I'm gonna show you the checklist I used for them actually. The thing that prompted, eight, what was it, like 80 something percent more conversions to the quote stage was adding a freaking three pixel border to that button. <laughs> I tried color, I tried like all this copy. We had a little like cool little icon and like all of these variations. It, and stupid two pixel border is what did it. And because we had software with that it said it let us know if it was statistically relevant or not, we were able to apply that and the client is very happy and they upped their marketing budget to, you know, twenty thousand monthly, which is great for us. So it was a win win. What? The debut is in the details, so it's the two pixel border yeah. right. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Just didn't want to interrupt, but. Oh, no, no. I mean, yeah, <laughs> interrupt talk. I like this to be a conversation. I mean, I usually sit down on the bat like a stool and do these talks. But that being said, I've also learned a long time ago some people. I try not to apply logic to anything. I seriously, like, this is just me. But if, I, if a test works, I, I'm going to go for it and then just test the data. I want data to drive my decisions. Um, I'm not a psychologist, I don't pretend to know human behavior, I'm not a UX expert or anything like that. But if the data works and the data continues to work, I'm just going to keep pushing that, that sales button for the client until it doesn't work and then find a new button to push. And that's kind of how I do it, but again, if I was smarter, I could maybe say this is the reason why and you know, it's because it goes back to the primordial instinct of liking borders, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, text. Text, text, text. You can test your headlines, your copy, the amount of copy, what 
you know, what you say, if you want your copy to be professional, non-professional, personal, non-personal, if you want to have buzzwords. Um, I have a copywriter that I've used um, who writes psychological copy. Um, and that's all he does, is he, he knows psychology and he writes it to cause emotion. Now the stuff you read it, it's pretty offensive a lot of the time. Um, like, a good example is we're doing a website for uh, like, a, do you know Life Alert? The old people fall down, they press the button so that they don't die. Um, there was a company like that and we were testing like like nice copy, like, you know what, you know, you want to be safe at home, warm, fuzzy feelings. But then we tested another copy, like, your mom's going to die if you don't give a shit. And, <laughs> you know, and this is where it gets tricky, right? Because you want to test, but you also have the client's brand that you need to <laughs> pay attention to. So, you know, I'm all about testing whatever and see what works. But of course, we run everything by a client. And some clients are like, yeah, go for it. Tell them their parents are going to die. Other <laughs> clients are like, no, no, no. So, but seriously, text can be very powerful. Um, the dental insurance thing we tried, um, it used to be like, get a quick quote. We tried 30 second quote, performed worse actually than quick quote, but things like that are also good things to try. Uh, images, text, you know, test pictures of ducks versus non-ducks, I don't know. Um, you know, just stock images, try different images. I like to mirror the images, flip them, reverse them, um, to see what the results are. I usually get quite different results just by the orientation and where the images are and what the images are of. So that's an easy one to do on your pages. And everything. And I'm going to go through a lot of examples. And this is actually a checklist that I have on my desk that um, I love. And now, by the way, these are already on SlideShare. I uploaded them like. 10 minutes before this talk. The link will be at the end, or it's on my Twitter account right now, at MP Mike, or my Facebook page. So it, it says, don't laugh until you try them. This is literally just something I found on the internet. And this checklist is what I do, bottom line. Professional versus unprofessional. And that's exactly what it sounds like. You know, I've, if it's a landing page, if we can get away with it, we'll try Comic Sans on it. You know, whatever the case may be. Um, but again, we're only testing small subsets of these audiences. Photos versus illustrations. One color versus another color. Low brightness contrast versus high brightness contrast. And these are extreme examples, obviously. You'll need a designer to make them look nice. Um, I also test border versus no border. Uh, clear image versus blurry image. I've, I've seen the blurry image perform really well. So, static versus animated, animated. Ugly versus sex appeal. I've had ugly do really well as well. Um, these things seem funny, but we have a methodical testing regimen that we do, and we test a little bit of everything. Again, we get the client's buy off, and we have a designer and a copywriter make them all match as close as possible to their brand standards. But I want the data to drive the decisions. Static ver um, versus interactive. Professional stock photo versus um, amateur informal photo. Different layout options. One call to action versus another call to action. So free trial versus no credit card needed trial, things like that. Images versus text only. I've had text only perform really well before in the past. Uh, upright versus angled. Button versus blue underlined text. Uh, regular border versus false border with a drop shadow. Custom ad design w versus familiar UI elements. And again, I know what you're thinking. This appears all very clickbaity, and it is. But um, I am all about the data. I want the data to drive the client decisions. And if I can get the client more sales while still respecting whatever their brand philosophy is, at our company we do a lot of work for 3M. So we take these ideas and we are a lot more strict with them because 3M is one of the largest companies in the world. However, if it's a you know, consulting company, they might be willing to do it. 
um, original image versus mirror image, what, you know, different font styles, standard ad shape versus a custom ad shape. Um, this works for landing pages, not just ads. Um, we take these ideas for landing pages, home pages, things like that. Positive versus negative, that kind of goes back to the life alert example I was talking about. Generic versus relevant to time period, like generic is want a girlfriend, you can meet single women here, or relevant to time period, home alone on a Friday night. <laughs> so, uh, meet, mention prices and discounts or leave it a mystery. Trust logos versus no trust logos. Um, the trust logo thing I find interesting because a lot of companies, once they earn those cert like ISO certifications or things like that, they want to display them. But it's good to kind of get the data and go from there. Also, you can use the weapons of influence that um, Robert, uh, I can't pronounce his last name. Joe Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, uh, scarcity, authority, consistency, liking, social proof, and give some examples there. Um, as well as some different ideas you can try for the copywriting. Like if your short words be conversational, evoke the five senses, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, you know, and different things you can do um, on the left to kind of tie into their different areas. And honestly, play and have fun. I mean, you want to make sure, this should be a fun process. I love A-B testing. I, find, I think it's like one of the most fun parts of a client project. Um, but, you know, have fun and play with it. And does it really, does it really work? Uh, it does. There's case studies out there that prove it. But obviously, those case studies are those case studies. But you might be thinking, okay, where do I begin? Well, we're going to go into a demo and we're going to log in to a testing tool that I use and some tests that I ran, although we had an issue with the script, so it's going to yell at me that the data is not statistically relevant, don't change anything, but you'll be able to see that as well. For uh, Sarah Watts' husband, Peter um, Watts' grilling blog, grillblogging.nu. So we're going to jump into this. <coughs> Are you hungry now? Yes. So this is his website, Grill, Grill Blogging. Um, I have it translated right now. Um, it normally does not have an English option because he is racist. <laughs> um, but I have it translated um, just so that I can read it. Uh, because yeah, for those of you who didn't know, Peter's like a world famous griller. Like, He's uh, auditioned for TV shows and blogs and books and gets sent free stuff all the time. So if you need good barbecue, talk to him. <laughs> and and next, next summer we're planning a, a J barbecue in Sweden. Awesome. Good. Sweet. Well, did you try it too? Of course. <laughs> I, I can, well, we got a vegan butcher shop in Minneapolis that is actually, no, it, it's gorgeous. Um, like uh, it's a full butcher shop, and they have like short ribs. Everything is just, but it's all vegan, and the stuff's delicious. And I get a lot of stuff there because I can't eat beef or pork, mm -hmm. so um, I can get some of that, bring it over, ship it to Sweden for that. So, <laughs> okay, well I digress. Okay, so this is his site. So we wanted to do some A/B testing on it. The tool that I like is something called VWO, Visual Website Optimizer. Um, it's a what you can just vwo.com and you can go in and set up the test in here. So I'm going to show you how to set up a test and a variant and then also how the data kind of pulls in from there. Keep in mind the current traffic is too low to be successful, recommended action and the test um, and try out some other tests because I added two many variations for the traffic level of his website. But that being said it still kind of works. Everybody here going to Grill Blog. Yeah. Maybe we got more traffic and more information. <laughs> yeah. Everyone, go to the tweet the grilling site. Let's try to get these. 
uh, visitors up. We also had an issue with the tracking co with the code with the template. Um, it was a theme template, and uh, the way they put in tracking codes, um, put it in the body, not the head, so I had to go in and change that this morning, and it was a little too late for the traffic. That being said, let's see what we got. So we're going to go into this campaign that I have made. And you can see we got four variations. We can look at the detailed report. Again, it's saying don't listen to any of this. But we got our four variations. We got a control variation. We got a stories above, a hero text, and one where I removed Peter entirely from the website, or the homepage. Because right here, there's this whole nice little bio. We were wondering what it would be if we got rid of that. So you can see so far, and again, we'd want this to run for at least a few more weeks. You can see down here, and I'll make this a little bigger if I can. That's really hard to read. Okay. I'm just going to do the graphs. So you can see right here the control is the orange. Uh, the orange has one out of three visitors for the control converted. In our case, the, we wanted to hit them uh, more than one page of the website, uh, more than I think 1.6 was the current average, so that they spent more time, you know, sp read more content, and soaked in more grilling knowledge. Um, it also talks about uh, where it is on the conversion rate and what the likelihood range may be. Talks about the stories above, and you can see how that is, and blah, blah, blah. So right now, the best performing one is putting the stories above. And, I, and what we did there is this under, I believe it was my services, or one of these sections, we put above his bio. And you're probably wondering how we did that. Well, we did not edit a single line of code on Peter's website to do these tests. His website is still good um, and is working just like normal. What we did is we just used, I'll go into the editor if I can get to it. They have a campaign builder. And their campaign builder, and I'm on my, I'm not using the Wi-Fi here, I'm using my data to try to have it be steady, so we'll see how well it works. So uh, you can see now it's not translated. It's back to the original Swedish. So we have our control here. Um, and you can kind of see how the website is. So you have our control here. You can see that. Stories above, we just put the that right below the header. We added some hero text right here. And then we did one, which is my personal favorite, where we just removed the bio, which is actually not performing that well, so we probably won't want to keep that on the existing website. So, but again, it's too early to tell. In a few weeks, that data may change. So, but how do we make a variation? Does anybody have an idea of what you'd want to, another test we could do? Different font. Different font for like the hero? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, that's how many points. I would like to have many points in there. So like the text in the menu be darker? Yes. Okay. So there's no contrast. Fair enough. I do not work back to it anymore. Cool. So we're going to add a variation. <laughs> so let's click add variation. <laughs> and then all you have to do is just, you can click it. And depending on the site, you, a lot of times you can just edit the style right inside of here. See if that actually worked or not. Nope. Sometimes you have to go element by element. There we go. So is that the color you'd want, or would you want it to do? Yes. So you like the you like the black. You like the black. Okay. So we just go in. We all we're doing is changing the colors right inside of this tool, and what it does is there's a JavaScript 
in the head so that it'll take 5% of the visitors can, and show them different variations just on the fly um, of the site without having to do any code on the site at all. And then you can log to? Yep, and then as soon as I click save, this will start, it'll be live um, in, in the wild. Do you use this together with a Joomla website? Yeah, well you can use it with anything, but this is a Joomla site. So all we did is, just like if there's a Google Analytics code, we just threw in their, their code to be able to do this. <coughs> you can do it with any site out there. It doesn't have to be a Joomla site. As long as you have access to put in a script into the head of the header before the closing head tag, you can do that. I'm going to leave that alone because that's the home page. Um, there's two options. Um, one, you can do an asynchronous uh, or asynchronous um, loading. The asynchronous script loads much faster, um, but I've never seen it take more than 500 millisec uh, milliseconds on a load of the site in my tests. But the asynchronous does that in like 100 milliseconds. However, with that template framework, the asynchronous wasn't working, which is why even though he's had hundreds of visitors since yesterday, it only shows like 12, so we had to change to the other script. So, so we have a variation. We can give it a name. I'm gonna call this black menu. So we got that. Go back to the control, and you can do lots of fun stuff. Like if you wanted to move stuff around, you could literally just like click an element and then just click rearrange and just literally just drag wherever you wherever you want the stuff to be and it's kind of it's kind of fun that you could we could take this section for example rearrange it and put it above this gray section if my internet would catch up. No, nope, that's not where I wanted it. Yeah, so you can do that. You can hide sections, whatever you want to you know, do. Remove the variation. How is it testing for, for mobile pages? So sure. Sure, so you can go in and um, load, switch over to a mobile view on this, and then do separate mobile testing. So you can set up tests for desktop and mobile. I recommend keeping them um, separate. So now we have our test on there. We're going to save and continue. And that test is live. So if you visit the site now, you and you happen to be one of the 5% that gets a test, and you happen to get one of those six tests, you may see that black menu. So, um, <laughs> uh, I was going to say, I'm actually am going to try to show how this works in real life, though, with a browser stack screenshot, and hopefully one of them will show me differences. A very secure password. Star, 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 star. Um. I like browser stack's um, screenshot thing because it allows you to see if the tests are working in the wild. Okay, we'll let that run in the background. Okay, so now we go back to VWL and let's look at our settings. We have goals, for example, because you could say I only want this to be on you know, you could have it be a global test on every page. For example, if we wanted that many to be black on every page of the site, we could do that, or just one page. Um, you can also look at the different goals here. The goals they have are you want to track the engagement, links, 
conversion, things like that. You can also look at the URLs and the heat maps and click maps through any of the people that are visiting the site and look to see how people are clicking on the different variations that happens to be out there. And you can also look at the previews to see like what it would look like in the respective um, variations out there. There's lots of other tests out there that um, VWO allows you to do. You can do a split URL test where you can distribute traffic to different URLs completely. You can do a multivariate test where you can choose multiple elements on a single thing, page, and find the optimal combination. Um, this helps you do it in a way that lets you know if it's statistically relevant or not. However, you only want to do that once you look at the individual elements and proceed with caution. <laughs> um, you can look at website review, collect feedback, on page surveys, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I really like VWO. It's a really good tool. I've used it for quite a long time. And then personalization, show target offers variations to specific user groups. So if they're coming from a certain country or something, you can do this. We did this um, for, I believe it was uh, Joomla Day, Minnesota, the Mall of America last year. W w anyone that was logging in and visiting the site, because I was talking about it last year a lot, from Prague said, welcome Jab visitors, click here for like 50% off. And we sold like 30 tickets or whatever just that way, but if you came in from any other IP, it showed you something different. So VWO is a really cool tool, and the pricing isn't that bad. Um, it starts at $100 a month for, I believe it's 50,000 tests a month. That's not visitors, that's just the visitors you test. And again, the pricing can go up from there as well. If we go to our little screenshot tool, we may start, no, this is not working. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Oh, here's one. Oh, sorry. That. This is the. Nope. Okay, the test, the screenshot tool is obviously not rendering the site right. Okay, so that's VWL. Let's jump back into the presentation. Maybe. Come on, Microsoft. It's a, it, it's a preference. Um, you know, I find 5% has worked for us. I'm not saying it's the best. Um, I like to keep the main site as untouched as possible to the majority of the user base until we decide what the final test is going to be. Because for the, for the other side is I don't want the user to get a different website roulette every time they're visiting the site. And in my opinion, 5% is a good way to achieve that without having the end users get kind of confused on like why is this changing every time. However, if it's a secondary inside page, I, I might be more apt to bump that up. But a home page, I, don't feel, I personally don't feel comfortable going above 5%, but it doesn't mean it's better or worse than any other option. Okay. Come on. So, the, there's this book I really like about A-B testing. Now, it's from, uh, has anyone ever heard of a company called ClickFunnels? Yeah. yeah. It's like a HubSpot, like funnel building landing, like pseudo market automation competitor. Um, they are one of those like, owned by one of those digital marketing gurus that sells lots of digital products that's going to make you a billion dollars in the next week, sell you another thing for 500 bucks, it's going to make you another billion dollars. Anyway, he has a cool book called 108 Proving Split Test Winners that I love. I adore this book. However, the only way to get to it is through a very annoying process, and that's why I'm walking you through it. So you go to dotcomsecretlabs.com slash free dash book. You're going to land 
on his landing page. Fill out the information to start your order. Then you're going to get an offer. You don't click the box. Then you go to this, you scroll to the bottom, um, and you say no thanks. You don't click any of the buttons. Then you say no thanks again. <laughs> then you close the tab that opens because <laughs> you would have completed the order and then this is another tab that offers you a secondary offer. And then you get your email and then you click it to unsubscribe and then you'll get your, <laughs> and then you get your book for free. However, if you don't follow that, that box is $4.99. That button is $1,200. That button is um, $100 a month. And these buttons are various prices between 40 and whatever. That being said, his other products and other education I do like. I do subscribe. I used to subscribe to his $100 a month newsletter where they would send you a physical mailing of different tests they did just because I like the way they test and I like reading about it. However, it's not about, it's, I'm not saying following his techniques is going to make you money. I just like reading the way that they write and publish. That, so I pay for some of the products, the majority I don't. However, the ClickFunnel product I do use um, I, for clients that can't afford a HubSpot or something, it's just a quick way to be able to do some of the basic landing pages really quickly and do some pseudo market automation and it has A-B testing built into it. So um, we have time for a few questions. Um, this is the link to the slide share if you wanted to view the slides. Um, so questions, comments, death threats. <laughs> How is it connected? You showed the demo during the demo. Yep. Um, you showed the testing the stuff. Yep. Uh, and uh, on the side, which is testing, uh, there is a script in the, in the source? Yeah, it's called a smart, uh, a smart code. They have an asynchronous and a synchronous option. You just need to put that into the head of your Joomla template. Um, or whatever site you happen to be on. It doesn't have to be a Joomla site, it can be anything. They also have a plugin for Joomla that you can just install, and they also have a plugin for WordPress and some of the other um, things up there as well if you don't want to go to like your template file, the index.php. Yeah. And those tests are connected to Google Analytics tests? Um, Google Analytics runs separately. However, BWO does integrate with Google Analytics and other analytics software. So you can send your test data and tie it in with your Google Analytics funnels directly and see the VWO data in Google Analytics if you wanted to do that. Um, yeah. I want to have seen in a direction that in template and in the phone directory that the accepting directory that there is a testing software or a component for, for Joomla, but I've not tried it there. Have you tried it? Have you any experience uh, I've in, used in Joomla? Yes, uh, I've, I've used Chameleon, which is a Joomla extension that ha is for A-B testing um, and other things out there. Uh, it allows you to like load different template files, but with the same articles and modules, or different CSS files, or different URLs. I've used it, however, what I don't like about it is, first of all, I'm doing the work on the live site. And I, I get really nervous from an SEO perspective how that's going to be served up. BWO doesn't serve this content to bots. You know, if it's a robot crawling from a search engine, they're going to get the default content. Yeah, you can do that with like Chameleon, you know, be really careful with it. However, I prefer just to the simplicity of, you know, being able to do it externally and not have to actually touch the core site. Which is also nice because a lot of our clients are enterprise and they don't let us into the site. But they'll install a script for us and we're still able to do the A-B test then. So I'm not saying it's bad, I'm just saying it takes a little more time and I get nervous about the search engine crawling the test. Even though you could filter it obviously and say ignore bots and things. You know that person be a never ending story. Goes and goes and goes. Yes. Do you have some metrics? whether to stop at that point or the time frame. 
Sh yeah, and VWO, it, it actually will tell you how long it recommends to run the test based on your visitor of your website. And then it'll tell you after the test, it'll finish it once it says it's done, there's enough data. It'll tell you then if it's statistically relevant. And then if it's statistically relevant and the results go in the direction you'd like, I would recommend rolling it out and then tracking the data. But it is a never ending story. From, from yeah. a professional perspective, what's the, the metrics that you need to stop it, for example? Or a time frame to fix? Um, it, what we do is we run um, monthly A-B test experiments. So we start a test at the beginning of the month. We hopefully have it end by week two or week three. We take the learnings and we apply those learnings to the site by the end of the month. But for us, it's a way to, it's, we, it's residual. We just, the next month, we'll come with a new slew of tests. Just because test A was awesome doesn't mean we don't need to keep testing. Mm -hmm. So for us, it's just a way to keep selling 20, 30, 40, 60, 100 hours of work. Um, and as long as the results are going in the right direction, no client's gonna say no to that. You ask any client in the world, if I can give you $2 for every dollar you give me and I can prove it to you, how many dollars would you give me? Well, the answer is unlimited. Because if we can prove that, and that's why I like data, because if you can prove the ROI, it's really powerful to the client. Does that answer your question? Did that answer your question? Uh, yeah. Okay. But when you do the test, um, are always the same visitors or different ones? I, the, 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 the same visitors or yeah. like? I mean, every month you put some test the page that actually was going well the first month. The same, right? Yep. That. You can and do it. A looking for always the same visitors to check the page because it's obvious that if you change just a little bit, you would like a new thing. Yeah. Maybe, maybe new visitors that have never seen that page, they will say, okay, it works for me. Maybe sure. it will work also the other one, but they will never know. So yeah, you can filter the groups that say, I want only return visitors or new visitors. Because mm -hmm. um, obviously, you don't want to keep testing the same people, the same yeah. person. Larger sites is easier because you just have so many people, the odds that they're going to get A-B tested um, differently. Um, I've, I've been a victim of A-B testing and have it annoy me like a, who, has anyone heard of Wolfgang Puck, the chef? Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, he's a celebrity chef in America. Um, he has this website where he sells ovens, like little countertop ovens. I wanted to buy one, but I kept like, Every time I went to the website, I got a different layout and a different price. And it took me, I got to go into the code to figure out what the URL parameters were to get to the low price that I saw the first time I was there, but I couldn't get back to that low price. Yeah. So that's an example of it being too much because I was being A-B tested on every visit. And, yeah. I, you know. And also, so people. Yeah. Especially if you have this, like the new news. That's really like, if you change all the time, even every month, that's really It's going to get awesome. disconcerted, yeah. which, which is also, one second, uh, which is also good to sometimes test inside pages and not only in the home page, because then it's a little safer. Uh, Isn't that tracked by cookie? Yeah. In our system, usually you get always the same variant, unless the variant Yeah, you, yeah you, you can put the cookie on there, but if they go on a different device or something. So yes, you can track the cookie and you can track that visitor and show, make sure that visitor will always see that same variant. So that, um, however, if they expire the cookies or they don't accept the cookie or, or they clear out their cache, but yes, VWO and whatever tool it does track it so the same variant until the test is over is shown. So. Is it free, this application, or should, should be a subscription? There's a free trial, no credit card needed, where you can do 1,000 visitors to test. Um, not a thousand traffic, just a thousand tests. And then, if you like it, um, it starts at a hundred dollars a month for, I believe it's like fifty thousand tests a month with unlimited domains. I so. just looked, and they have a startup plan for fifty dollars a month oh. for ten thousand visitors. Oh, well, there you go. So yes, that's a little bit more than yeah. it's And then I just looked at their Twitter too. I'm sorry. <laughs> but apparently, there are free tools that they have. Um, if you go to their site and their footer, there's free tools by VWO. Case studies, an A-B testing yeah. duration calculator, a landing page analyzer, and an A-B testing significance calculator for free. 
Yeah, and they also have this idea factory, which actually gives you ideas and tells you how long it'll take to implement it, like 30 minutes, more than a day, etc. And it'll walk you through how to do it. And the case studies are great. They have a wonderful ebooks, um, their landing page, you know, scanner, whatever. That they, they also do great webinars. I really like this company because they really try to like be thought leaders in the space. Could you explain me about the cash with your the websites? When you, for instance, an e-commerce website, you change the buttons, but you are still putting a inside new products. Sure. It works. Yes, it, it does, but what it VWO is going to do is it's going to take usually, depending on how your site's coded, the first product in, you know, let's say you have a product grid and you change the third one in the row, it's usually just going to always change that third one. However, you can go in and if you have the products tagged or, you know, classified or something, you can go in and tag it with specifics and um, make it more precise from there. But um, if the site's really dynamic, it's probably just going to change that same element number, like the third thing or the fourth thing. Um, or you can just do it like an individual, maybe a specific product page, which that URL will stay sta um, static. Because it's all based on the URLs that you go to. Does that answer? Can you just on other pages or the whole process of <coughs> buying, for example? Or only uh, the my page. Can you test what? Uh, my process. Yes. Yeah, you can do multiple URLs. You can string them together. Um, you can also do path testing, secondary pages. You can change a single element, but have it on the whole site or just a single page from there. Um, you can string them together. It takes a little more time because you have to have different variations that go from page A to page B. Um, we did that. Um, some of the landing pages we've done, like if it's a multi-step landing page process. So, did you have a? Also, I uh, just uh, said that I had this also one time too with an uh, um, um, offer that it expired all the time. Oh. So if you went there the second time, it wasn't a special offer, and it was just do you think cookie, and then you just had it. Yeah, I've seen that a lot. Like you go and you get the countdown, this offer expires in 10 minutes or whatever. And some, some sites, if you go back, it actually is expired because they're trying to prove that they weren't lying. But you can just delete the cookie and do it again. So, uh, it's cheating. It's not cheating. <laughs> uh, any other comments, questions? No? Good? Okay. Well, we got about Thank you.